All right, well, I'm making this video. It's been on my mind for about a half hour, and the sun's finally coming up a little bit, so I figured I'd make this video while it's fresh on my mind. You know, um, I don't think people realize how much harm that they are doing to themselves no matter who they are out here no matter what they believe if it isn't the truth so uh, of course this is mainly for Christians but but again atheists could be in the same boat here you know just like I talk about pride that Christians have it's the same issue that atheists have and uh, I don't think people realize how bad it is to turn the truth into a lie You know, uh, if you're a Christian, we should all know that idol worshiping is bad. And it doesn't make a difference what it is that we're idolizing. And you know, I've said this before, if I knew what every denomination out here believed, then I would, I would talk about every denomination out here, but I don't know what every denomination believes. But again, today, the church is gone. I mean... The majority of Christians are not living for God. Today, they do not act the same that they used to be. And I've said that I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times. But turning a truth into a lie, let's start with the Catholic Church. So no matter what a person is idolizing, if you're idolizing, you are turning the truth into a lie. Because we know the truth is, and yes, I'm only going by, uh, since I can't speak from the Bible, all I can say is that it's wrong. Always has been, always will be. God never changed. It doesn't make a difference whether we're talking about beads. It doesn't take a, it doesn't make a difference whether it's talking about Mary. Because again, I'm going to say this, and I don't care who gets mad. Mary is not divine. Mary is not with God. Only Jesus is with God. These are strictly traditions of men. But it is idol worshiping. And uh, she's not the mother of God. Jesus was already with God before he came here and was born. 
the Lamb of God. But people need to wake up to these things because God was against these things before Christ came here. And he will always be against these things. And to, and to keep on talking about this, which I would rather move on to other things. You know, I, I witnessed a uh, an article not long ago where somebody believed that there was a picture of Mary somewhere that was doing something, was actually moving. And uh, I think later on somebody debunked it. But these people, literally for months, and they may still be today, were literally showing up by the thousands every day because they were, well, I don't think they're doing it today because of coronavirus, but I mean, uh, people were showing up by the thousands thinking that God was doing this. If anything, God was allowing it to happen because turning a truth into a lie. Idol worshiping is wrong, and if you believe it's right, then you are turning the truth into a lie. But it, like I said, if I could throw every denomination under the bus or under my 18-wheeler, I would. I don't understand how anyone can believe in once saved because you are turning a truth into a lie. Now, before I go any further with talking about once saved, first off, well, the cat. Let's let's go back to Catholicism. They believe you have to repent, but they don't believe you have to repent until like Sunday, for some odd reason. And they're definitely not living a repentant life if they know that it, they're going to repent today. And they're, they're going to have to repent next week, which today's not Sunday. And I'm not talking about them believing the Sabbath is Sunday. Or the start of the week or whatever. I don't care. I'm not talking about that. Uh, oh, man, I got thrown off subject now. Uh, but, but that's hypocritical. That's hypocritical. Those thoughts are hypocritical. I mean, you confess of your sins all the time when you confess, when you sin. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. And uh, so let's go back to once saved now. And by the way, Catholicism, they're living like it's a once saved. They're not living like what they're doing is wrong. If they know they're going to confess of their sins a month from now, a, we a week, a month, a year from now, that's being hypocritical. So, uh, once saved, I, I don't care what anybody says, that's wrong. It does not speak of once saved in the Bible. I, I, I'm, I don't know how people could, could say that there's things in the Bible that's not true. There ain't no eternal security, there's only eternal life in Christ. Point blank, end of story. 
only eternal life in Christ. No eternal security. So, I don't know why when people read the Bible that they don't think that almost everything that they're reading is not apparent to them, but it is. It's apparent to me, it's apparent to you, it's apparent to everybody in this world. If it says that a murderer goes to the lake of fire, it says that liars go to the lake of fire, if it says that you do not inherit the kingdom if you're 1 Corinthians, the book of Ephesians, the book of Galatians, the book of Revelations has a list of things. And these things are evidence of the flesh. Drunkenness, fornicating, adulterer, adulterer. homosexuality and so on and look at the Christians out here that believe that they could be a homosexual and inherit the kingdom that is turning a truth into a lie because it says they do not inherit the kingdom so they are turning the lie into a truth but that's not what you should look at it it is turning the truth that they do not inherit the kingdom into a lie, correct? Correct. I don't know how people are full falling for this trick. Satan is deceiving the people, the masses, leading the sheep astray. But who is accepting these things? Jehovah's Witness. I mean, don't you think that they would wake up when at any point in time that they could rewrite their Bible? Don't you think that that would be kind of odd there? But aren't they turning a truth into a lie? That Jesus Christ is God in the flesh and when they don't believe in Jesus Christ being the Son of God God himself in the flesh and not equal when hit when it's talking about Jesus Christ in the Bible before it talks about our Heavenly Father in the beginning in the Bible in Hebrew is talking about Jesus coming here and dying on the cross by his own hands and it even says these very things in the book of John these very things are in the book of John may not, it's not word for word but these very things that he laid his life Yes, he died by his own hands. And if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, and he is the reason, and it's all about him, then you are turning the truth into a lie. You are turning a lie into their truth. Do you get my point? Their lie what they believe is a lie of Jesus Christ being God into their truth which is the opposite turning a truth into a lie so uh, this is what I don't understand I, I really wish people could remember because I made a video you know when you Google uh, scriptures, like, uh, where in the Bible does it say this, okay? You will get these websites, and I know you guys have seen this website, 
there is a blue and white website they'll have every scripture from every Bible what I did one time when I was in Oklahoma City and I made a video about this people I don't care what you remember I found a parrot I'm not a paradigm ship I found a Mandela effect they changed the NIV version of first Corinthians 6 9 it used to say wicked but yet the NI uh, the King James said unrighteous I literally made a video where I posted up every Bible and I put up every word that was used in that spot and now the NIV version says wrongdoer and I did not get this stuff wrong people at all I did not make this video wrong and I have even found people that have made videos talking about 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and the word they use is wrongdoer. It never was wrongdoer. It was wicked. I have yet to find one other person that has even talked about this. I am not wrong. Just like I'm not wrong about Hillary, her name used to have one L. I don't care about all these other Mandela effects, but most people are affected by the Mandela effect. And you can even find other people that know about her name having one L. But how many of y'all are affected by it? Most people are, and I don't even care. That's not the truth. The truth is about the Word of God. But I'm just telling you, 1 Corinthians in the NIV used to say wicked. Okay, now why is that imperative? Okay, in the first place, I used to always say this. And it debunks all my videos if you think it was wrongdoer. I don't care how long you, I don't care how far you've read the Bible back. The Mandela effect has messed people up. I don't care how far back. Even J.C. Penny, there have been people that have found proof that J.C. Penny was J.C. P.E.N.N.Y. There are, there have been people that have found proof behind it, but yet so many people are affected, saying no, it was P.E.N.N.E.Y. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. So, but what I'm trying to prove here, in the book of Ezekiel, it says that the Lord is not happy with what he has to do with the wicked. Okay? I do give God credit, all credit, that when they wrote the NIV, that they used wicked and there are other Bibles that have used the word wicked go look it up as a matter of fact just Google 1 Corinthians 6 9 and then find the blue and white website and and see and it'll give you every every Bible and find the one that has the word wicked I promise you I've even went back and looked you can still find it but so if if they think if whoever wrote these Bibles and I do believe God was behind this people because you can see all these other words are together wicked and unrighteous are synonyms of each other so if the Lord is not happy with what he has to do with the wicked don't you think that the Lord isn't happy with what he has to do with the unrighteous or evil or lawless because we know per I think it's the NIV it says lawless I think the King James says um, 
workers of iniquity. And it says Jesus denies these people. So, and what does unrighteous have to do with sin? Sin. Confess of your sins to be cleansed of all unrighteousness. I know I didn't. I know I didn't say the whole scripture. There's no need to. I'm trying to prove a point here. And then I found a scripture that says unrighteousness is sin. So we know sin is unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is sin. I'm just trying to prove a point here. That if the Lord isn't happy with what he has to do with the wicked, salvation isn't granted to the wicked. And wicked has to do with sin. Because if you Google the definition of wicked, you will find the synonyms, you will find evil, sinful, lawless, iniquitous, uh, unrighteous. Don't you see that these are all things that are in the Bible? All these words are in the Bible referring to how we were before we ever gave our life to the Lord. Okay. So if it says practicing sin is lawlessness and Jesus denies people that are lawless and lawless has to do with sin, then Jesus never took your present and future sins. He never did. If you if you keep on sinning, you lose your sacrifice. That's right. If you're in sin, you are of the darkness. If you're in unrepentant sin, you are of the darkness. You are not of the light. You are not covered under the blood. If you are in the darkness, you have to be of the light to be covered under the blood of Christ. You guys are not looking at the Bible right. You are not rightly dividing the word of God. Your pastors are lying to you. I never was wrong. I never lied to any of y'all when I said that God told me we could lose the Holy Spirit. You guys are not rightly dividing the Word of God. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you, your family, your, your, I don't care how long your family has been a part of your denomination. Most of y'all are caught up on man's word. And God will give you up to sin just like he will give you up to sin if you turn the truth into a lie. I don't care how long you've been a pastor. I don't care how long you've been going to church. I know what God has bestowed in me and I know what God has shown me and I can rightly divide that most people out here are nothing more than a Pharisee. Now, I have in the past, lately, I have called myself a hypocrite. I'm not a Pharisee. I may be a hypocrite, but I'm not a Pharisee. Because I have said time and time again, there have been times I've known that if I had lost my life, I would have not inherited the kingdom. There for a long time, I was living a repentant life when God started pouring the Spirit on me and I got baptized by the Holy Spirit. And I even admitted that roughly a month or so later, after God started pouring the Spirit on me and I got baptized by the Holy Spirit driving down the road when I was in New Mexico, that I asked God for forgiveness of my sins and I felt the sins go away. And do you know that when I have a bad day and I have a good day, that when I'm sorry and God knows I'm sorry, I can feel my whole life change. Why? Because of the godly sorrow. But I don't think people 
know the repercussions of taking a man's word over God's word or turning a truth into a lie. God can sear your conscience. And guess what? Just like it says in the living word of God, it is better off not to know the truth than to shipwreck yourself. And that is where most Christians are right now. Shipwrecked, backslidden, apostate, fallen away. And you know why I say that I'm not a Pharisee? Because I know what a Pharisee is. A Pharisee is one honoring God with their lips, not their heart. Thinking they are right with God when they are not. Claiming to be of God when they are not. If I admitted to you all the things that I've done and I did wrong and I knew I wasn't right with God. Was that saying that I'm right with God? And that I'm not? Remember, a Pharisee is one that has an outer appearance change and no inner appearance change. You guys think I'm not rightly dividing these things. I am. I am. A lukewarm is one that is not living for God enough. Obedience has always been a must with God. If you think not, you don't know the truth. God never changed. Never changed. The most important thing Jesus Christ did is made it possible for one day we would be with God. Only through Him. Other than that, you guys are blowing the cross out of proportion. He never took the law away. And most people, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I shouldn't even be talking about once saved no more. I've said enough. But I'm telling you this right now. He never took your present and future sins. You go back into living in sin, he warns you. He warned us not to hang around with Christians. I have always known what it would happen if I hung back with a Christian. I mean, with a sinner. I would go back to my wicked ways, and I sure have. I sure have. I know exactly if I saw somebody, and you know, why am I giving my examples, man? Why don't you think about your examples? What did God bring you out of and that you've gone back to? Huh? God delivers people from things. Oh, that's right. We would never be perfect. That's what everybody's excuse is. We would never be perfect. I told you people. I told you people that when I made these videos, I was always the same. I would start making a video and all of a sudden I'd break off talking about the same things. I told you people, I told you people, I told you people. I warned you people that this is how I am. I warned and I warned. I've sit here and said I could be talking about one thing. I'm burning up. 30 degrees outside. I got this jacket on and I'm burning up. I sit here time and time again. I knew this was going to happen. But I'm not lying. Telling you this right now, most people do not have the Holy Spirit. They've been given up to sin. They got a false spirit. Let me get out behind this truck. I can't listen to this beeping sound. You cannot live a life of sin. You can only live an unrepentant life. You have to know what you're doing when you're doing it. I don't understand how a person can't know what, what they're doing and not just stop it. I'm guilty of it. I mean, I, you guys don't even understand how many times I still get convicted by the Holy Spirit from the things I do just before I sin. I already know it too. Man, man, my man, how could I do it? I mean, you know what? It don't even don't even go nowhere about talking about not reading the Bible. I already got a new thing. I already got a new thing set up today. I need to go to bed as soon as I get to where I'm going today because I really didn't get much sleep. I'm gonna start reading the Bible and see if God will do something. I've got one thing that I wish people would follow me and see if, if God does something like he has done before for me. Cause a paradigm shift. 
change the, the scriptures so people would know the truth. When I witnessed Psalms 119, 155, it did not say, the first time I ever witnessed it, it did not say salvation is far from the wicked. It said salvation is not granted to the wicked, and that was per the King James Version. And there are other people out here that have witnessed that too. There was another scripture one time that I witnessed said, the wicked are at the right hand of Satan. Just as Christ is at the right hand of our Heavenly Father, the wicked people out here that are living in sin, that have not been cleansed of their uh, unrighteousness because they're not willing to confess, they're not willing to repent, their habitual, hypocritical, unrepentant sinners are not going to inherit the kingdom. Fact. Get to the fact right now. Keep on listening to man's word. It'll ruin you. It's ruining people like you wouldn't imagine right now. Well, uh, it doesn't make a difference what denomination. I don't need to talk about no more denominations. If you're a drunkard, not going to inherit the kingdom. Pothead, not going to inherit the kingdom. Fornicator, not going to inherit the kingdom. Idolater, not going to inherit the kingdom. Adulterer, not going to inherit the kingdom. Homosexual, not going to inherit the kingdom. All these other ones, I could go on and on. All the sexual immorality. I, you know what even tells you? It's a sin to sit there and make, uh, you know, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to leave. I'm not even going to say it. Man, well, might as well make it all your hump. I mean, all your loud noises when you had your sex. Not going to inherit the kingdom. Moral. That's what God wanted us to be. Not immoral. Well, either way, I've got about 15, 20 seconds before this video ends. Uh, yep, crucify the flesh. That's what Christ's people do.